Hi friends, let's see how we can optimize React applications and how to increase page speed. As you can see, the loading time of the application and the transferred data size are pretty high. And we have only 10 posts here and 3 more pages. So it's not a complex application, but it still has some optimization problems. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use React Lazy Loading and Intersection Observer and I will give you some image optimization tips. And after that, our application will be much faster. As you can see, it just takes milliseconds. And now we fetch these pages, posts, and comments only when we need them. And you will learn how to lazy load images without using any library. So let's get back to the first app and see the problems. The first reason the load time is too long is obviously the image size, but it's not the only problem here. The other problem is we actually fetch all these pages, all these posts and comments even if we don't need to. Some users will visit your website and probably they don't even care about your about page, image gallery and every single post and comment here. To understand it better, let's open up the VS Code. I'm using React Router DOM to navigate between pages and on the home page, we have some posts and we show them using the post component. And in that component, we have another component called comments. So let's build our application and see what's gonna happen. As you can see in the production folder, there is a JavaScript file that includes every single page and component. It means when we deploy our application, this bundle will be served to users. For small projects like this, it's not a problem, but the larger applications cause a bigger bundle size. When users visit your website, they have to download this file to see the content, and it slows down your applications. So what I want to do is, I want to split this file into small chunks and reduce the essential bundle file size. To do that, instead of importing pages and components directly, we will be using React Lazy Loading. So I will comment them out and call them using lazy. Homepage, lazy, and we are gonna import components in this function. I will do the same thing for others. Normally, when we visit any path here, we should see the related component, right? But since they are still loading, we need to specify what should be displayed on the website. To do that, we are gonna be using suspense boundary. I'm gonna wrap the page and provide here any loading indicator. It can be a spinner, loading bar, skeleton, or whatever you want. I will just write loading. I will do the same thing for others. And let's see what happens right now. To see it better, I'm gonna lower the connection speed. Okay. They are not loaded yet, but when I click here, as you can see, it's loading and then it shows the component. So let's build our application and see the difference. I will open the build folder and now we have multiple JavaScript chunks ready to run on demand. Of course, you can do it by configuring your module bundler or using a framework but I want you to understand the React ecosystem and how things work under the hood. Okay, let's do the same thing for the comments component. I'm gonna lazy load the component and show it in a suspense block. Actually, I can create here a fake delay function to see the fallback better. It will take a promise and return this promise after 3 seconds. So if I pass this import to the function, it's gonna delay the process. Let's see. And perfect. What about images? On the gallery page, we have an image list and we show those images using a loop. My device is connected to a mobile internet and it takes a long time to load all these images. And image sizes are too big. So here is the first tip. 
when you upload any image, you should always compress and crop that image before storing it. If you crop them to get a certain size, it will help you to use lazy loading. If you check any popular website, you will see that all images are cropped and the resolution is reduced. As you can see, they also use lazy loading. So what I want to do is, when I open this page, I want my browser to load only the first image and load the second image only when I scroll down. Let's open up Pexels. As you can see, it shows a background here and shows the main image as soon as it's ready. Of course, you can use any library for that and they are really easy to use. But as I said, I want to teach you how they actually work. So let me introduce you JavaScript Intersection Observer. Basically, it detects the visibility of a target HTML element in the viewport. What I mean by that? Let's use it in the application and you will understand everything. I will create a new component called lazy image. And instead of this image, I'm gonna call that component. So this loop is gonna create 10 lazy image components because we have 10 items here. And let's return an image or a div, doesn't matter. And I will give a width, height, and a background color to see it better. Okay. They are here. So firstly, we will check the visibility of the item in the viewport. The first item is visible, right? In this case, I can load the first image. Then, when I scroll down and reach the first pixel of the second item, I can load the second image. And others. Let's see how we can do it using an intersection observer. As you can see, we need to create a new observer and we can give here an option, but we don't need that because by default, the root element is already the browser viewport. Basically, the whole screen here. We don't need any additional margin. If you need to, you can give a margin using CSS, not here. And this threshold is the percentage of the target's visibility. By default, it's zero. So as soon as we see the element here, it's gonna be marked as visible. If you make this number 0.5, for example, when you reach the half of the element, it's gonna be marked as visible. Or if you make it one, you have to scroll down until the end of the element. And when the item is visible, we are gonna use this callback function and load the image. Okay, we created the observer, but we didn't pass in what we are gonna observe. As you can see in vanilla JavaScript, you can select a target using a query selector and pass it in the observer. But since we are using React, we can use a use ref hook. Let's say ref and a use ref hook. And I'm gonna select this image. So when I use ref.current, I will be able to reach this HTML element. It's exactly the same thing. Let's pass it to the observe method, but to do that, I will be using use effect hook. Because when we run this component, it's gonna automatically observe this element. And also, I shall clean up the previous observation before running the new one. To do that, I will say unobserve. If you don't know why we use cleanup function here, I highly recommend you watch my use effect video I explained everything you need to know about use effect. Okay, by the way, I want to wrap this with a condition because when we fire this use effect, we may not have any current value yet. I can do the same thing here, or I can directly say observer and disconnect. And let's create this callback function and see what it gives us. I will say console log entry. As you can see, there are 10 items and one of them is intersecting and it's the first item. Let me actually give an ID for each item so we can see better what's going on. Let's send the image IDs and use them here. And the first item is true. So using this boolean, I can actually load the main image. To do that, I'll create a use state that stores the visibility of the item. 
and when the intersecting is true, in view state will be true, and if it's true, we can show the image instead of this placeholder. So let's pass the image URL from the parent component. And as I said, you should definitely store the image size like that, but we don't have yet. I will directly give a random size and the source. And we can take all those props here and use them here like that. And I want to change this background color. Let's see. I will open up the network tab. As you can see, it loads only the first image. Of course, I didn't compress the image, but it's still good because it doesn't load all images at once. And when I scroll, it loads the second image and others. And this is how observers work. Now you can go ahead and use it for these posts. If the placeholder is visible, you can show the related post. Okay guys, that's all. If you learned something new today, please like the video. If you want to support Lamadev, you can join the channel or you can use the link in the description below. Don't forget to follow Lamadev's social media accounts. I hope I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.